a 70 year old blues musician who makes instruments out of hubcaps to play, a 16 year old girl that developed an app to fight bullying, and a Japanese man that planted thousands of flowers for his blind wife are just a few of the amazing people that you're going to meet on this week's Seven Coolest People. Hi, I'm Roger, and every episode I take you on a virtual ride in my car with seven of the coolest people making huge impacts on the world around us. This week's no different, so let's get started with the countdown. Number seven, C6 Steve. C6 Steve is a blues musician who's been around for a, quite a while, and he's pretty good. The thing about Steve, though, is that some of his instruments are made out of just random materials like hubcaps and broom handles and all sorts of other kinds of things spatulas beer cans just whatever he makes incredible music out of these simple instruments and you should check him out as soon as you can on the web number six liam wildish liam is a 20 something that owns his own business of window washing in great britain and in his spare time when he's not running his business he goes around cities and he cleans off the street signs and the road signs to make them bright so that people at night can see them. He does this as a service just to his fellow person to make sure that they're safe, which is pretty cool, I think, and something that we can all learn from that you have gifts and talents and abilities and you can use them to make money and to do good all at the same time. Number six. Claire Sarnowski. When Claire was in the fourth grade, she went and saw a talk from a Holocaust survivor named Alton Wiener. And Mr. Wiener and Claire developed a really special relationship over the next couple of years where they would talk and communicate. And one of the things that, that Mr. Wiener shared with Claire was that he had this passion to make sure that all children in the state of Oregon where they lived got mandatory Holocaust and genocide education. And that was became a passion of Claire's too. Together they went and talked to uh, State Senator Robert Wagner, the state legislature in Oregon, and testified about the need for this type of education. And in 2019, it, that legislation unanimously passed and now all students and school age kids in Oregon are mandated to have some kind of Holocaust education. This is an awesome thing. Germany has had mandatory Holocaust education for decades and this is a great start but what would even be better here in the United States is if we had mandatory slavery education and I hope some high school student just like Claire will take up that legislation and advocate for that real soon. Number four, Natalie Hampton. Natalie's another high school student that has gone out of her way to make an impact uh, for herself and her peers, just like Claire did. Natalie can vividly remember being in the middle school lunchroom alone and becoming a target of bullying. When she got into high school, she decided that she was going to develop an app that allowed networking of students to happen so that, so that students that were lonely and didn't have anybody to eat with could find somebody in their cafeteria and, with, and not be afraid of rejection. And to me, that is like the most intense thing another student can do for somebody else is unconditionally accept them and have them join them for lunch and eating. That's just super cool. Number three, Mike Thantun Nguyen. Mike is an entrepreneur in Singapore where he has developed a technology and, and infrastructure to help people travel to Miramar. And during his travels to Miramar, he noticed that there were hundreds of kids lined up just walking miles and miles to get an education. When one time Mike returned back from Miramar to Singapore, one of the share bike ride companies had gone out of business and left tens of thousands of bikes stranded and ready to go into landfills. So Mike decided what he was gonna do was he was gonna buy those bikes and give them to those children in Miramar. And that's exactly what he did. Mike's already bought 4,300 bikes and has ordered the other 5,700 and has started de delivering them to kids in Miramar so they don't have to walk to school every day back and forth dozens of miles. Mike's done something where he's taken his business and made it his passion. 
and those 4,700 bikes, almost $400,000, he paid for himself. That's pretty cool. Number two, Takis Proestakis. One day, Takis was walking through and by a garbage dump and happened to find an abandoned dog. He took him home and tried to get him better and, and get him some nourishment and took him to a vet, but he couldn't handle him in his house. So he took him back to the dump and left him, but would visit him regularly from there on. And over the course of six years, he began to, to take care of hundreds of dogs out at this dump, which didn't really quite sit well with the local people that lived around there. They complained so much, they threatened to poison the dogs if he didn't get rid of them himself. He asked them if they could just wait a little while, he would take care of the dogs, and that's what he did. He bought land right next to the dump and moved the dogs in there and now has started his own shelter. And to date, he's rescued over a thousand dogs and is currently taking care of over 300. What Mike's done is pretty amazing. And I think that if you have the ability and you see a need, you should take care of it. Number one, Tashioku Kuroki. Tashioku was a dairy farmer who lived in the Miyazaki province in Japan. And he was married to his wife, Yasuki, for almost 30 years. And they had had two children, raised them on the farm. And unfortunately for her, Yasuki went blind with complications from diabetes. Tashioka was devastated by his wife's loss. She'd become depressed, stayed in the house all the time. So what he did was is he decided that he was gonna plant thousands and thousands of phlox moss on their dairy farm for two reasons. One, so that she could get up every day. She might not be able to see the flowers that's produced by this moss, but she could smell the aroma every day. And it did, it made her so happy to be able to smell that smell. The other reason Tashioku did this was because he was hoping that by planting this massive garden of this phlox moss and flowers, that people would come and visit and see this and want to spend time and talk to his wife. And boy, was he right. They report that 7,000 people a day come and visit their dairy farm to see the fields of flowers and in doing so also talk to his wife. Tashioki has done an amazing thing for somebody he loves. But it was a pretty simple thing. Hard work, no doubt, planting all those flowers, but a simple gesture. And it shouldn't be about whether it's your wife or your husband or your children or your parents. When you care for somebody and you love somebody, you do simple things even though they're hard. And for that reason, Tashioku is our number one coolest person on the planet this week. So that's our list this episode. What do you think? Let me know what you thought of these folks on the comment section below as well. If you know some cool people that you think should be on one of these shows, Leave their information and I'll check them out and see if they cut the mustard. I'm Roger with The Lonely Commuter. And remember, be kind to one another. Take care of each other. We're all we've got in this world. This has been The 7 Coolest People on the Planet. And I'll see you next time.